Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Welcome back to another video. Well, this video is part of many. Part okay? of many. We're going to be learning some stuff about performance tuning and overclocking in the month of December. Uh, it's one of those things that, I don't know about you, but I kind of don't really completely understand. Yeah, I definitely thought I might have understood a little bit, and now I'm like, yeah, I was real wrong about a lot of things. To kind of demystify the whole process of performance tuning and overclocking, we thought it was better that it came from an expert, because that we aren't. Yeah, he knows a lot more. So if you happen to catch the podcast that I recorded with Asai earlier in the year, you already know who I'm talking about. Asai is from Overclocking TV and knows a whole heap more about this subject than we do. So we're glad to have him here in the studio to demystify the whole process for I think, us. I think we even called the podcast Overclocking Master. Mm. Probably about accurate. It's pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate. In this first video, you'll get to learn about the Open Bench Table project that him and a few of his overclocking friends have been working on, and it's super, super cool. We actually yeah. got our own special Engon like, bench a, table. It has a little engraving on it, a little Engon logo engraving. It's pretty sweet. I would say it's way more than pretty. I kind of freaked out when I saw it. I was like, okay, I was we made it. I was scared when I saw it in the box, because when it's flat, it actually looks kind of scary. There's like a lot of little knobs and twisty things everywhere, but then when you unpack it, you're just like, oh, this is... This is beautiful. So we take a look at the overmatch table and we actually put a couple of those together and show how it all works and talk a little bit about what you can expect from the coming weeks. Anyway, let's get stuck in with the first part of this overclocking series. Big boost! Big boost. I'm uh, Isai Simonet. Uh, my nickname online is Truthman. I've been around this specific industry for more than half of my life. I've been involved in a lot of different projects around this uh, overclocking and performance tuning uh, industry and community. Uh, for example, I was part of the helping out the organization for the Overclocking World Championship for the past few years and part of the Open Bench Table project. So we have the right person here to make overclocking not so scary. Um, but today we're going to just show you around the Open Bench Table project and um, it looks really, really cool. So for the people who don't know about the Open Bench Table, why did you make this because i needed one you needed actually one? The, the whole project needed one yeah uh, back three years ago when the project started uh, we wanted to make something that was light portable but still robust to have like a huge like a quite powerful system to be built yeah. and we're moving around the world so we had issue with the amount of weight we can get sure. in, the, in our luggage and uh, we, we needed something that could be fast to build without any tools. So Overclocking TV, so myself and Timote, we joined with uh, HW Bots and Streetcom to actually make this project happen. What were people doing at events before the open bench table existed? So either they used the, the cardboard from the motherboard, from oh, the, okay. the, sorry, the cardboard from the motherboard, yeah. which will be not really good looking, but it works. No, it, it works, it works. And otherwise there was other kind of bench table on the market as well, but they are a little bit bigger, so it's not easy to transport uh, when you move around. So one of the things that we noticed when you were setting up this, this mini ITX one was that uh, you said you don't need a screwdriver. Yes, so the whole point was toolless and easy to build. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't time actually. Um, it must have been less than five like, minutes. Yeah, it's, we usually say <laughs> we should do a competition about that. Yeah, we can speed build them. <laughs> Which one of us could beat it the fastest? Well, it's definitely you, <laughs> but. But yeah, it didn't take long at all, and you didn't need a screwdriver. So they're all thumb screws, and so all thumb screws. It's all um, all sit in itself. Mm -hmm. So if you pack it up, it's actually just all fit in there. So it's like one uh, one plate. It's pretty solid. It's really solid machined uh, metal. It's so. uh, it's one big piece of aluminium. Yeah. It's uh, CNC'd out, and uh, the key point was the the least uh, waste mm -hmm. in in a way, and something that is robust. The least part you have, the least chance of breaking and having to build everything. So it was like one uh, one big thinking behind that. So on your bench table, I um, I got some uh, we got some Asus motherboard, uh, Intel CPU. Uh, the graphic card is not the final one on this. This one's the, just oh, for man. the testing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we have a 1080 Ti in the mm -hmm. back. I know we have uh, some 2070 or some other cards that might be might be popping up on that in the next few videos. Uh, Corsair memory DDR4. 
and the Corsair all-in-one uh, coolers. So on this platform, there's gonna be a 9700K, which is an unlock CPU from Intel. Mm -hmm. I say it like this, but it's actually a real unlock CPU. Okay. Um, so that will allow us to change some of the settings and reach out further than it's actually so, uh, sold for. Uh, this one is just a Vengeance RGB Pro. Okay. Uh, this one is 36. 3600 megahertz in terms of frequencies. The other kit I have is very interesting because it's 64 gigs of DDR4 memory at 4000. Basically, that memory kit costs 1500 USD. Yeah, I'm not buying that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I would if I could. So, well, that's eight sticks of eight. It's an eight six of eight, indeed. Ooh. And all RGB and, mm. and everything. All right. So, with uh, the Open Bishop, you've got another one here. Which is exactly the same as this one, just a okay. different color. Can we can we show people what it's like to put one of those together? Do you want to try it? Yes. Okay, go oh, on. Oh, wow, I didn't actually <laughs> expect this. All right. Okay, so, so... I'll try my best. So about the... Um, the, the hood or mm -hmm. the, the sleeves. Yeah. Um, the sleeve is actually something you can only get when you buy the open bench table on the official website, okay. which is a limited edition. So there's actually a number on this one. Uh, this number was like... 451. Yeah, 451. Oh, interesting story. This is actually the first red table out of the factory. So uh, to get the legs out, these are the retaining screws, these yes. ones? Yes. All right. So you have two retaining screws per leg. Um, it's the same with the with the Mini ITX version as well. Okay. The the whole point was One. you don't need two, and it's uh, all in itself. So there is no part that moves or make noise or anything. Mm. All right. Are you building it? Yeah. <laughs> you was not expecting that. <laughs> All right, how did I do? Not bad. I did Actually, okay. not bad. I, I did not tell you anything you know, all no, by you yourself. No, you got it. So all the right. tricky part now. This, uh, the tricky part. You can't put the motherboard straight on this because well, then no. you will have contact between the pins out. On it'll the short out. Yeah, it'll short out. Sure. So we have uh, pins and push pins. There's actually two ways of doing it. Either you take the push pins like we did on the Mini, mm -hmm. which are very plug and play, like basically like this one. You can just plug it out and put it back in. Oh, okay. Do they... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. They, they still hold the, the, the motherboard. It's just yeah, easier yeah. to just swap. Cool. So you can either take this one or you can take the regular standoff, which okay. are the same one we use for the PCI Express stands. Okay. And uh, you can screw uh, the motherboard. All right, where do I find those? <gasps> They're underneath? Oh, the, I see. So that's the PCI Express one. Cool. Can I do a couple of these? Sure. You can do four if you want. Cool. So this will depend on the motherboard design that you sure. have. So for example, this one, the first... Um, so we could adjust these depending on the slots once we yes. put the motherboard on. So usually it's uh, never the first one on all the new motherboards. Uh, it's usually the second and third one. Okay. All right, so thanks for showing us the open bench table. I am really excited for the coming weeks. What are some of the things that people can expect to see next week and, and the weeks after that about some of the things that we're gonna get up to? So we might do quite a few things. Right. Um, obviously like the basics, uh, why it's not that dangerous or mm -hmm. nothing will explode. So everyone could potentially just overclock their CPU and get, get a lot more So the whole Yeah, the whole point is it's not just about overclocking, it's performance tuning. The point is, you have something that is there, that's your PC, you're using it every day. You can always get a little bit more from it. There's oh, like always that. a way, and it's, uh, you know, it's. I would say it's like a car. You can have a car, officially the speed limit is 100. I have actually no idea in this country, uh, or the country you're in, so don't, <laughs> Yeah. Don't don't pick up. We are not don't the authority on, that. on speed limits. And if you want to drive, drive faster, it's just a matter of you know, going faster. It's pretty much the same with your computer. I mean, on the road, please don't do it. On your computer, please do it. Yes. <laughs> Thanks again for coming by. Make sure you join us next week where we're gonna dive into a little bit of uh, overclocking fun. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a look at some quick things you can do to improve your RAM speeds as well as uh, some of the limits you can hit with your CPU. 
Yeah, I think some of the <clears throat> the voltage and, and amps and stuff that people find a little bit of a mystery, myself included, I'm like, uh, now after seeing as I like go through the overclocking process, I'm like, I'm pretty sure my CPU at home is running on way higher voltage than it should be. So I'm gonna go fix that. And there are a lot of really awesome free tools out there to make the whole process really easy mm. and less daunting because you don't have to use your BIOS. The other thing that you probably want to keep an eye out for is the kind of insane giveaway that we're doing over December and just after Christmas I think we'll be drawing the winner of that. We built a whole custom PC that we're giving away which is you painted still it. madness. I know! It's, it's uh, not in here. It's not in here but it's crazy and um, someone is going to be sent out this whole PC that uh, we actually got some parts from Gigabyte and AMD hooked us up, Western, Western Digital, Digital as well so it's a uh, it's shaped up really nicely and I'm actually going to be really sad to see it go to a new home, but... But happy at the same time. Mm, because someone else can play games on it. Yeah. Big boost.